Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the Steel Series Prime Mini Wireless. Yes, ever the mouse that everybody is just itching to get their hands on. And of course, I have this Arox 3 Wireless, um, the Ghost Edition, the updated edition. Ah, new mouse feed. But I don't even know if it's worth reviewing. I'll probably talk about it for a bit later on in this video. Um, but I just have to say thank you to Techni for sending me or just lending me these mice to review. Around a week ago, I tweeted, somebody stop me from spending $230 on SteelSeries mice, and Techni came in clutch, sent me these, and you'll see what I sent him on his channel, I would presume, in the coming days. Uh, but yeah, that is how I got the Prime Mini Wireless, been using it for four days now. And my feelings about this mouse are definitely mixed, because I don't think it is a terrible mouse in hand. It definitely has issues that I will explain. But really, the main caveat is the pricing. It is $130 for the wireless version of this mouse versus $60 for the wired one. The wired one is a lower weight, has the same exact switches, which are the main selling point of the mouse. It's just honestly bizarre, especially considering that the sensor in this mouse is based off of a 3335. And while I haven't had any problems with SteelSeries implementation of the sensor, especially not with any LOD issues, you're paying a super premium price for what's typically a budget sensor. So you see a mouse like the Ninjutsu Origin 1X has a 3335, um, similar specs all around, except it doesn't have the uh, epic magnetic optical switches or whatever, um, and it is an $80 mouse. So my camera like off-centered, oh, that is awkward, like and sub, like and sub. I just don't see any way to defend the pricing on this mouse. It should be $100 max, and that's like accounting for the big brand tax. But with that aside, I'll just get into the review of the mouse. Um, so this is a mini shape of the standard Prime. I hated the Prime shape, um, and this is definitely more manageable. I do have an issue um, with the way I actually have to grip the mouse because of where the side buttons are placed. And the side buttons will be a... Actually, no, I'll just talk about them now. Side buttons are atrocious. Um, you see there's like a little ridge like you see you see where it cuts off in the middle below that part you can't actually hit the button so it's like it, there's an illusion of more button than there actually is so you get this really skinny amount of side button this is how I have to claw grip the mouse with my thumb right there where comfortably where I grip the mouse I can actually take advantage of the comfort groove on the left side of the mouse uh, my thumb is much lower so I have to do this extremely weird uncomfortable inconsistent grip on this mouse and I, I just don't like it at all um, but that is just a personal use case issue because I have to hit these side buttons while aiming and with this horrible low profile side button design that is basically as high up as it can legally get um, it's just pretty shit but when I'm naturally gripping the mouse it feels very nice for claw grip with my hand size of 20 by 11 um, this mouse has a ton of ridges that makes it feel like just a, a prototype that never got smoothed out but I'm sure it was intentionally designed that way and compared to the EC3C, the Prime Mini Wireless is smaller. It also has a more aggressive slope on the right side. And this just leaves you with way less height on the right side to freely pr place your fingers, um, which really does make the mouse feel smaller and it's just awkward. It feels like my ring finger and pinky finger are somehow on different levels just because of how the right side is designed. And also, you see how the mouse curves outwards towards the top. The Prime Mini Wireless doesn't do that, so it's sort of a weird flat side. And my issues with the shape really just boil down to my hands being too large for the mouse because this is a mini ergo mouse. It feels surprisingly good for fingertip. Like I would never recommend an ergo for fingertip, but this shape is manageable with it. Uh, but if you have smaller hands, I'm sure this would be a comfortable mouse for palm. If you're fine with like super angular shapes, if you prefer that over nice round shapes. But yeah, maybe I'm just a round shape enjoyer. That would make a lot of sense. But moving past the shape, it's time to get to the most important selling point of the mouse, the Prestige OM Magnetic Optical Switches. The crispy clicks, dare I say. Um, but yeah, these are the same as they were on the standard Prime, so if you felt that, you know what these are going to feel like. My right click has um, a lot of pre-travel, post-travel, and side-to-side -side play, but my left click is perfectly fine. Um, so that's just interesting. Doesn't cause any issues in game, but it's worth mentioning. Um, they are crispy. They have a unique like pop sound to them.
very different to a just standard Omron 20M, let's say. And the best thing that you can say about them is that they are not mushy because that is really a common problem with mice that try to implement optical switches. In exchange for that, they are a bit heavier to activate and they do have a nice tactile response so you can feel, and like I mentioned before, that unique pop sound. In terms of in-game response, perfectly fine for like editing in Fortnite, clicking situations in Kovacs. Um, just any time I needed to click the mouse, it felt reliable and consistent, which the shape did not. Next thing I mentioned is the sensor, the True Move Air, which I had thought was based on a 3370, um, but based on this Max DPI, it was pointed out to me that it is based on a 3335 sensor. Um, and there's really no issues with the implementation, at least nothing that I could experience. Normally with the 3335, there's either an issue with the LOD being too high or DPI deviation. And with 1600 DPI default LOD, there's been no issues with the sensor. The build Build quality in hand feels solid. There's only one slight place that creaks and it's when I squeeze right here. But I think that's just a design thing um, as opposed to the build quality deteriorating. Overall though, the 75 gram weight, it doesn't feel heavy, but it just feels dense for a small ergo mouse. Um, it's interesting. I feel like the wired version would definitely feel a lot lighter, um, even with like being held back by the shitty stock cable that SteelSeries provides. Some other things worth rattling off is that the mouse is using USB-C God bless SteelSeries. Um, I, it hasn't died on me yet. I don't want to go into their stupid software to check what it's at. Um, there's no DPI so you will have to use their stupid software, unfortunately. Um, the stock feet are solid. They feel sort of like the GPX stock feet, um, so definitely a bit slower, but passable on all types of pads. Didn't pick up a lot of texture, though. The skates are pretty thin, though, and the initial friction is noticeably higher than something like Tiger Eye, so I would recommend getting an aftermarket set um, because I would also recommend just getting the Prime Mini wired. Just don't buy the wireless version for 130 I think the wired version comes with black PTFE feet, so you would want to upgrade those. Um, but yeah, these are passable. This just does not feel like a $130 mouse, though. And uh, with the side buttons forcing my grip to be extremely weird for the main game I play, I just can't give it the seal of approval. And once again, I gotta say thank you to Techni for sending out the Prime Mini Wireless, allowing me to review the Precision Esports Gaming Mouse. And I said I would talk about the AROX 3 Wireless for a bit. I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, it's the same AROX 3 people are like oh the build quality improved maybe on the sidewalls or maybe it just hasn't deteriorated yet it's just there's a minor problem of every button on the mouse either being massively flawed by design or just having horrendous quality listen to the creaking on these mouse buttons so yeah that's pretty terrible tons of wobble as well pre-travel post-travel the whole nine um, and then the side buttons as you can see they're extremely skinny at least they aren't catfishing you like the prime mini wireless but still um, terribly skinny side buttons I used this mouse for like 10 minutes in Fortnite before I just genuinely I it was honestly terrible I don't even know what to say and also the scroll wheel is recessed so when I said every button is either fucked or has a design flaw I meant it so yeah hundred dollar wireless mouse with the lowest sensor position ever click quality on par with like a cooler master mm710 um it's just not the move in my opinion and the mouse skates they're a better design and they're actually ptfe um i can't speak to if they're great but they're better than before overall though not worth a hundred dollars this shit not worth 130 and yeah, just not a SteelSeries mouse fan. The Apex Pro TKL. Now that is a legendary product though. Cannot wait to ship these mice back to Techni. Somebody who I guess appreciates these products. Um, but yeah, thanks to him once again. Like and sub if you enjoyed the video. And peace.